right, hello. Um, okay, so first off, um, I have started uh, doing like a fun thing through my social media. Um, every morning, like for, for a long time now, um, I wake up, I make coffee, I um, eat some fruit, and then I pull a tarot card and I contemplate it and I work with it and I um, journal about it and all of that. Yeah, and so since this whole uh, end of the world thing has, has happened, um, uh, I have been starting to do Instagram stories about it. So I pull a card in the morning, I spend my own time working with it, and then I talk about it in my Instagram story. So you can follow me uh, on Facebook or on Instagram, watch my stories, comment, uh, stay connected. I would love to hear um, about how you're doing and um, how perhaps you're relating to some of the, the cards that I have, uh, that I'm pulling and what I'm talking and how, blah, 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 and what I'm talking about through them. Oh, um, yeah. So I have so much that I want to talk about and earlier today like I, I did my stories and all the stories like I was start, starting to talk about sovereignty and I started talking about like some conspiracy stuff and then I started talking about um, like taking your power and what, what being powerful means and then all of a sudden my Instagram stories stopped working and it only perpetuated my whole like oh maybe the conspiracy things are true because now I'm talking about them and now my videos aren't working. I got all fired up and I was like Burr! and then I had to like do a bunch of stuff and had some sessions and stuff like that online so I had to like not do this video and so it's not quite the forefront of my mind because this morning I was like you know um, <laughs> so I'm not quite there yet but I still want to talk about a lot of the stuff but I anyways whether or not conspiracy theories are a thing I think we're kind of living in one right now we are living in a conspiracy theory so now all bets are off I am totally open in a new way different kinds of things maybe being true. Because look at where we are in the world right now. It's kind of cuckoo fucking bananas. Um, so yeah, welcome to the end of the world with Kristen Marie Starr. We, today we're gonna be talking about the magician and how we are so fucking powerful and we have all the magic that we need within us and even though the world's going to shit doesn't mean that we can't maintain our sense of sovereignty not even our sense of sovereignty that we can't maintain our sovereignty and maintain our integrity and our power and um, stand in truth and stand together I believe it I feel like I've been fluctuating between many emotions uh, sometimes I have like broken down in sobs and fear and anxiety and all of that because you know again we're facing the end of the world welcome to reality right now um, and then I also feel more inspired and more on fire for like the deep call that I've talked about before of creating this army of superheroes of you know being a source of light and standing in integrity and like times like this one you know you know this is the time when th when things go really hard it's like a test of our metal it's a test of like our, our character Oh, I sound like Calvin and Hobbes, but like the dad of Calvin and Hobbes, a test of our character. Oh, you know those moments when you realize that you are no longer like the kid in the story, you are now the adult in the story, and you're like, oh, when did that happen? Yeah, I just had one of those moments. I'm gonna sit with that for a sec. I am the adult. It's okay. Moving on. Um, so the magician I pulled this card this morning and I started talking about it get really fired up about it And so this card I'm not gonna talk about it too much again. I'm not gonna go into like the full tarot this, My YouTube isn't about tarot um, But my Instagram is you can go onto there and see we talk about it every single day just saying um, Or book a session with me. I would love to talk to you about tarot. It's great um, But a little bit about this card so again if you can see him he's kind of like doing this as above so below sort of um, mudra so he has the ability to take like information or or like the energy of the ethereal flame flames the ethereal planes and then draw it into the universe and or in the material world and then uh, manifest it and the word of manifest has all sorts of like weird connotations um, you know you, you have every every like you know neo spiritual sort of like you know person talking about how to manifest your dreams and all that sort of stuff and you know when we think about that we're like oh yeah I'll like be on a yacht with a Gucci bag like that's not what we're talking about here being able to manifest is being able to exert your will towards a certain aim and seeing the like um, uh, and seeing results um, like the definition of, of magic is being able to change material reality according to your will 
and then we can understand will as our ability to harness our energy, our intentions, and our um, actions towards something specific. Um, so magic is the uh, is the like is the result and of exercising your will as well as a state of being, I would say. Um, but the magician here, he's got will in space. He has the ability, he's got like, you know, he can, he's really clear and focused on, on what he wants or what they want. We'll stop gendering it, so what they want. Um, and is able to uh, harness action, uh, energy, and um, like mental capacity towards, uh, towards that aim. Um, so yeah, so use of willpower, use of power in general, like when this card comes up, it's just you have the power that you need, you, you are your own magic, you are your own power, uh, remember that sovereignty, remember that sense of like, um, of capacity within you, root down and within, you have all the things, you have all the things. Yeah, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I wanted to talk about what it means to be powerful and why I think this is a fucking amazing card for these times right now, is because right now I don't think many of us feel, feel very powerful. You know, you know, we can't control what the hell is happening to this virus. We can't control whether or not people properly uh, social distance and, and, or like stay inside and take proper precautions. Uh, we can't control what the government does. We can't control the economy, like whether or not it crashes or whether or not it changes or it evolves. Well, I think that we can start to exert some power in that. But um, right now, our sense of helplessness and powerlessness as the world as we knew it is now crumbling. You know, the world as we knew it is now, is no longer. Like the world a week ago is not the, the world today, which makes us feel even more like lack of control and lack of power because we see no end in sight for what's happening. So the likelihood is, is like the world one week from now, one month from now, one year from now is gonna look drastically different than the world we're living in in this very moment. And, um, we can't predict it, we can't stake a claim in things, we can't, you know, bury our heads in the sand, otherwise we're going to be thrown into a perpetual emotions of, like, even further levels of helplessness. Like, this is a very, very um, disempowering time, or we can feel very disempowered, right? Our lack of control makes us feel very disempowered. But I do want to differentiate between control and power. So. I really, really believe with the very core of my being, and I'm not the first person to say this, I think that people have been saying this for thousands and thousands of years, that your sovereignty, the sovereignty over your soul, the sovereignty over your body, the sovereignty over your spirit, the sovereignty of your own being, how you choose to act and be regardless of what's happening external to you can never be taken from you, ever, ever. Your sovereignty, is always yours. You can be enslaved, you can be in chains, and still you have your sovereignty. What does that mean? And how can we exert that and find that right now? Um, so again, we can't control the things that are happening external to us, but we can take power back in terms of how we act the choices that we make, the information that we accept, the, cho the, the decisions on, on the, the, like the people that are in power right now, if we accept the decisions that they make or whether we demand them to um, make better ones. Um, you know, these are things that we do have power in, and um, which is a really good thing to remember. Um, okay. Yeah, so I know, it's so hard right now. It's so hard right now. And like, I do want to like, as much as I'm saying, you're powerful, you can do it, woohoo, and be, <laughs> be like the cheerleader for you. Please know that if you are somebody who is like hearing those words right now and is just saying, fuck you, I'm mad, I'm sad, I don't feel really powerful, I feel really shitty right now actually, and I'm scared, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, I, I, I trust me, I understand. I tr trust me, I understand. I understand and I also wanna continue to tell you that you're powerful. <laughs> And um, even making the choice to allow yourself to feel what it is that you're moving through and spend time being mad and spend time being scared and spend time, you know, beating the shit out of a pillow or spending time bawling your eyes out in the corner and being spending time like, you know, just shutting off all so social media and just watching Netflix and drinking tea with your best, oh, not your best friend, 
unless you live with your best friend, in which case, yes. Um, with whoever it is that you're living with, or your kitty, or your dog, or whatever. Like, whatever, is, whatever coping mechanisms that you need right now, um, in order to get through what I would say is like a global trauma, um, then know that you have my support in that. But there's a very big difference between, um, you know, so sometimes, you know, there's a healthy way to bury your head in the sand in that sometimes we have to shut things off and focus on like positive things that are and, and live a, like a semi-normal life even though around us things are crumbling. Um, and then on the other end of, the, end of the spectrum, like freaking out, going into hypervigilance, trying to like, you know, you know, look at all the information and, 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 and like worry about it and think about it and all of those sorts of things. Like all of that is really, really normal and actually healthy ways of coping with something that's really traumatic and really hard. Um, and what we're going through right now is traumatic and is really hard. Um, and I don't ever want to discount that. So if you're in somewhere along the spectrum, um, that's okay. Um, but when it stops being okay is when we live in those places where, where all of a sudden our coping mechanism, mechanisms become our identity or we have to identify with um, the, the ways that we are coping um, or that they become like the natural state that we occupy or the natural embodied state that we occupy. So freaking out is okay, it's healthy and normal, unless you are in constant hypervigilance and you are staying in that state consistently, in which case I would really suggest that you find some ways to um, seek support or to seek some help and, um, and uh, find ways to like um, ground and find support. And while well, having a healthy dose of, you know, burying your head in the sand just a little bit for a little brief amount of time, living a normal life, talking about like, you know, your kitty cat or you know talking about the thing that you're inspired about doing and trainings and you know all of all of that sort of stuff totally normal unless you are consistently acting or like only living in that way as though um, what's happening right now didn't matter or that it's not actually happening or that it doesn't have as big of an impact and like you're you're completely blinding yourself to reality so the key is that we have the most power when we are steeped in reality, when we are steeped in truth. And um, so we have to consistently come back to that. And really like a hard truth is that right now, we don't really know what's really true. We actually don't. Um, we are bombarded, bombarded, bombarded consistently like every single day with so much information from like and a lot of it is conflicting and a lot of it is um, and in that conflicting messages where on the one hand we are fed a message of hope and then on the other hand we are fed a message of like things are gonna get even worse and then we are going to get conflicted in terms of like you know look at this really positive way to think about this and then we're getting information about how um, actually that's all of the big problem we are being fed all sorts of like conspiracy theories that I don't even think may be conspiracy things there might be actually some elements of truth to them we are being fed um, information from our government and from you know fucking stupid billionaires I have a really hard time with billionaires right now I don't care how philanthropic you're trying to be if you have billionaires Billions of dollars, you can do a fuckload more than what you're doing right now, and it makes me really angry. Makes me really angry. So I don't think. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna put that aside. Um, but we are being fed information by these billionaires and these like you know government officials and these people in charge, and um, you know some it's just it so much conflicting information how do you know what's true how do you know what's real you know I think all of us have watched enough like doomsday apocalypse and uh, like movies to know that sometimes the people in power are trying to get one up over us we are, have seen time and time again how the people in power will do anything that they can for the bottom dollar in order to like maintain their sense of like uh, economic power and and um, and you know the enslavement of, of the human of the human being where we like the average person is not even really a person the average person is a combination of a battery and a cog in the wheel and like the biggest lie I think we've been fed as like in our culture is that is that the human being is only worthy and, and, and only important if you are really really good at being a battery and a cog combination and it's a lie you are you are nature you are nature you are in nature with consciousness and power and magic and sovereignty. Fuck being a battery. Fuck being a cog. I'm mad. I'm really mad. 
So what to do with conflicting in, uh, like information and how can we get our power back in that and how can we remember our power and remember our sovereignty. And for me it's having a healthy balance of critical thinking with an element of um, yeah, balancing critical thinking with openness and skepticism and um, maintaining the understanding that we don't have all of the information and a lot of the information that we have is glimmers of truth masking um, deception. Um, and for those of you who are listening to this right now and be like, oh, she's just another conspiracy theorist or whatever, like, hello, we are living in a conspiracy theory. Have you not seen what's happening in the world? If we would have told, if you would have, like, anybody told any of us, that like a month from now, two months from now, that we'd be living in the world as we are right now, we'd, we'd, we'd totally mock them and say that it's a conspiracy theory and not take them seriously, yet here we are. So maybe there's things going on that we're not really aware of. And um, again, taking our power back, or for, for me, having a sense of power and a sense of like sovereignty is understanding what I value, understanding um, um, what's really important to me, and not sacrificing that, no matter how afraid I am, no matter how scared I am, no matter how much my bank account is in danger, you know? And you know what I value? I, I value human life. I value the earth. I value our independence and our ability to make our own choices. I value like, many, many things. What I don't value is, you know, deception and lies. I don't, I don't value, like, I'm not going to tell you all the things to, to value. You can choose those for yourself because you are sovereign and you are important and you are valuable and you have your own mind and you can think critically and you should. So don't even believe me. I want you to listen to the things that I say, sure, and have a healthy dose of skepticism and openness and critical thinking and think for yourself. Taken the information and, and thinking for yourself also means being aware of yourself. So being aware of what you value. You know, what are your values and holding true to them regardless of how afraid you are. And the second thing is knowing what your triggers are and um, what's really coming up for you, you know. So sometimes when we're really um, like terrified right now, and a lot of us are, um, we are more likely to accept um, somebody coming in to save us, even though those who might be saving us are not really, um, don't really have our best interests in heart. You know, sometimes we're so desperate to like allow things to just be okay. And if you're like me, you want everything to be okay right now. I really want everything to be okay right now. I want everyone to, I want my loved ones to be safe. I want my grandma to be safe. She's in her 70s. I think she's approaching 80 right now. Like, I want her to be safe. I don't want her to be in danger. Like, I'm really scared about what's going to happen to me financially. Like, you know, all the, these are all real big fears. Um, but not being reactionary to my fears and still making decisions based on the things that I value, the things that are important, you know. So again, we can't control the world right now. We can't control the virus. We can't control the economy. We can't control our government. We have no idea what's actually happening behind, like, in, like in the world right now. There's so, it's so crazy. Um, but we can maintain our sovereignty. We can maintain our integrity. We can maintain that we are going to continuously and actively seek truth. And you know, right now, being like, well, I believe that um, you know this whole virus thing is a hoax and it doesn't really matter and you know whatever. I still think you're an asshole. Want to know why I think you're an asshole? Because what if it's not? You don't actually know, and all of a sudden you're putting people's lives at risk. That's like you know, sorry, that's me and like throwing my values on you, but I think that we should make like value, valued based 
judgments while also taking into consideration how we can affect the world around us and people. I think one of the reasons why we as a culture and as a planet is in such a dark place in the way, like even before all of this happened is because we don't take into consideration the effects of our actions and the effects of our decisions and, and I think we need to start. We really need to start. How can and, and understand that like now more than ever we can probably understand that of how interconnected that we are how one thing happening on one side of the planet within a matter of weeks can spread across the entire planet and completely alter how we are and, and how we live and our ability to live like the world is completely different today than it was a week from now and a month from now or a month ago and this can continue to evolve and change. We are infinitely interconnected in both a negative way in terms of like one, one negative thing can cascade like all around the globe, but then also positively. That when I am taking other people into consideration when I'm making the decisions and how I live, then that's going to ripple out and it's also going to include me in that goodness, in that consideration, in that kindness. So like, don't be an asshole. So there's like, yeah, don't be an asshole. <laughs> I'm really fiery right now. I'm really angry. Angry and scared and all of the things. Um, like we all are. Also really inspired. Inspired to like really put into action the skills, not the schools, the skills and the tools um, that I have been learning and practicing for the past decade and really putting in, this is this is our time. I think this is the activation of the light work. This is the activation of, um, you know, those of us who are meant to be, uh, you know, positive influences in the world to actually, this is this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. You know, your Instagram posts and your like, you know, your 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 cute, uh, um, inspiring messages at the beginning of your yoga classes or the things that you say to your friends. Like now, it's time to put like the your action, your words into action. How you live, how you act, the decisions that you make, the information that you accept and don't accept, um, being able to think critically, um, being able to be open-minded and to uh, being generous. Oh my God, these are things that we can do uh, to actually put our <clears throat> our beliefs, our values, and our words into con concrete action. We're taking the ethereal of ideas and beliefs and. Um, and uh, values and we are manifesting in them into the world. We can't control what happens with the virus or the economy, but we can control the kind of energy that we pull from the, from, from the ether, being like your internal self, you know, your values, your emotions, your, um, your beliefs, the things that you think and, and feel, and then putting them out into the universe, into the material world. And again, that is all the things there today. I already listed them. Uh, but talking about being generous, I think this is a really powerful thing. So another thing that tends to happen when we see our purses getting a little tight, you know, our bank, bank the, the number in our bank account starts to dwindle and we don't know when our next um, uh, uh, source of income is going to be, we are more likely to be, um, again, fear-based make bad decisions or make unwise decisions, maybe not bad, so just less wise than we would otherwise make. And then we're also less generous with our neighbor. Um, it's a really powerful thing, a, a way to like maintain our sense of power actually, is through generosity. And generosity can come in many forms. It doesn't mean that you have to give all your money away, but we can be generous in terms of our time and our, uh, we can be generous in terms of our emotional selves and um, we, we can be generous in terms of what we offer um, as services to one another and, 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 and um, you know, for those of us who are hungry or for those of us who are afraid of like, you know, th there are so many things that we can do in order to be generous and we are seeing people do that. I think that's one of the most beautiful things right now about what's happening globally is that we are seeing this uprising of like the natural beautiful human spirit and it's like loving kindness and it's like generosity and it's sweetness we are seeing that and it's like to me this is another way of us maintaining our sovereignty and maintaining our sense of power is through that 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 we are allowing those really beautiful parts of us to come there and be there for for one another and we are going to need it we are going to need it in the, in the coming weeks in the coming months a sense of generosity Mm -hmm. um, what else? I had a whole bunch of things I've written. I had to bring it down. Okay, so in my book, which has kittens on it, look how cute it is. Um, we have power when we stand together. 
when we stand with one another against injustice, um, when we stand together in what we believe in, when we stand together as like a, as a human race, that we're not just individuals trying to like make sure that me, mine, and I is A-OK, -okay, that actually it's a we. And in this we, that we're in it together, we are able to, um, again, be powerful. Um, we have power when we stand up for others. Um, so oftentimes when crisis happens globally or in certain areas of the world, um, the most vulnerable people are the ones who kind of get it the worst, while the people who have the most power don't really see the effects, and that's bullshit. And that makes me angry again. So what we can do to be powerful is we stand up for the most vulnerable. We stand up for the people who need our help. We stand up for people who can't use their own voices. We stand up for the people who can't stand up for themselves. And uh, that is an extremely powerful thing and we should do that, more of that. We are powerful when we use our voice. You know, use your voice um, against injustice. Use your voice against cruelty. Use your voice again with when you think that something doesn't sit right with you or feel right to you, voice it. Again, think critically. Maintain a healthy amount of skepticism and openness. Know your triggers. Know your emotional state. Know the things that you're more likely to accept versus others because you want to feel X, Y, and Z. Um, know like what your biases are so that you're able to understand them. These are just like, like basic self-reflection and the more self reflective that we are, um, the more that we're able to take the information around in the world around us and see what's actually just mirroring the things that we want to see and what's actually based in reality and, real and, and, and truth. And we know that and we can begin to use our voice to stand up for the things that we actually believe in. We can use our voice to stand up for, for things. Um, think critically. I've already talked about that. Think critically. It's an important skill. I think they should be taught in, 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 in like, you know, in kindergarten to like critical thinking so fucking important if you don't know what it is oh man I'll do another YouTube video you should google it in the meantime critical thinking gold um oh we have our power back when we are willing to accept a little bit of discomfort um, in order to in, in order to maintain our values and integrity so right now it might be it's like you know Sometimes we feel like we have to do a deal with the devil in order to maintain our own sense of like comfort and like get our lives back. And for those of us who might be in quarantine for weeks or maybe months or who knows, um, we might be willing to accept like, you know, make a deal with the devil, so to speak, to use that term or to use that sort of saying, um, in order to find our comfort or to get our lives back when maybe we should, um, again, think critically, make decisions based not on fear, but on truth, and um, um, yeah, values. What do you value? What's important to you? Like, what does the word integrity mean to you? What does integrity mean to you? I want you to like spend some time and actually think about it. How can you act in integrity right now? Where are you maybe not in alignment in that? Like where are you out of integrity? Do you believe that the people making decisions right now are embodying integrity? Good questions to ask. Um, and the last one, there's, there's many, many ways to find power, to use power, and to like embody power. Um, but one that I think is actually probably one that you probably wouldn't think of, but I think it's really important, is to find joy, find pleasure. That even though the world right now is in a very scary state, you know, that's not minimizing that. But there is there is a lot of really beautiful, beautiful things to the world. A lot of things to take pleasure and joy in. Um, and finding, finding those things and um, spending time basking in them is a, is a really powerful thing. It's a way to come back to your sense of empowerment. Yeah. Okay, 
Well, I've gotten mad, I almost cried, I talked about a lot of things, it's been talking for half an hour, oh dear. Longest video yet, no big deal. Um, but the last thing that, I, that I'm, I'm going to say, I've been listening to it this long, then, you know, way to go, you did it, half an hour of me rambling. Um, but uh, next week, I, so a while, like a few weeks ago, I launched my first online workshop. It's uh, called the Principles of Magic. And when I launched the, the workshop, it was before all this happened and like borders were still open. You know, I had, was going to be, I'm supposed to be flying to, like honestly, in two weeks, I was supposed to be flying to Rome to go teach in uh, Italy, Austria, and Germany. And then I was supposed to be coming back here to Bali. There's a new yoga studio that's opening up. I'm gonna be one of the main teachers. And I wanna start that, yeah. All of that is gone. The world is changing. I was to do my first online workshop and you know, all these sorts of things. Rolling with the punches here. Everything's different. I am staying in Bali and not teaching at the studio until you know, we get the clear to, to like start doing that um, when life becomes okay again. But anyways, what I meant to be talking about is this workshop. Um, and uh, I wanted to kind of open it up so that more people can have access to it, even, even if you can't afford it right now, because right now, who knows what's happening to the economy. So I'm gonna be posting about it more um, so that you can know what, that's, what that means. Um, if you can't afford to, and you, and, or you have already um, purchased the workshop in its full price, so first of all, thank you. It's really helpful for me right now. Um, and what you will get is, in addition to like being on the call, being on the, um, like in the workshop you get the re recording you're going to be getting um the pdf a few days like a few days after after all the things uh, a pdf with like homework and information um or, like a recording of the meditation and a few other like, kind of goodies that i'll be sending to you but i also want to open up the call and open up the workshop for people to be able to come no matter what your financial situation is right now. I think that we need to come together to help one another, again, through generosity and through kindness, um, and then also help to empower one another. And this is literally what the, this whole workshop is about, is about, um, again, I talked a little bit already about willpower and um, magic, and we talked about it more, and some sort of like the principles behind how to do that. So, okay, so, so you yeah, know, so the principles of magic, that's literally what I've been talking about. How, how to like harness power, how to harness magic. Um, so what I'm going to do to make it accessible is uh, just send me a message if you want a link to the Zoom or the Zoom link. Um, I'm going to be doing two of them instead of just one. So I'm going to have one that's really good, more accessible for people in North America, and one that's a little bit more accessible for people in Europe. Um, and it's going to be pay what you can to be able to have access to the call. And maybe pay what you can is like actual money, or maybe it's like you know a commitment to be a bit more. Um, you know, active on my social media, like for those of us like myself who uh, rely a lot on social media as our source of, um, you know, marketing and getting in touch with people and, you know, for our work that actually every time you like one of my posts or you share one of my posts or you watch one of my videos or you comment on it, it's actually currency for us. It's actually really helpful. So for those of you, if you didn't know that before and you have friends who rely on social media and, and these sorts of things for, um, for, for their work, like their stuff. If you like them, like their stuff. Comment on their stuff. Share their stuff. The more engagement that we get is actually really helpful for us. It's really, um, it kind of spreads the word. It makes, like, the more engagement we get on our posts, the more our posts end up showing up um, in different people's feeds and, you know, and are, like, you know, in the featured things and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So many ways that you can kind of contribute um, if it's not financially. Um, then through you know, engagement through social media, that's kind of like a really amazing way that you can, um, you know, give an exchange for the workshop. Um, so again, I'm going to be posting about it on social media and doing like a big talk about it a, a bit more. Um, uh, I'm going to do that later on today or tomorrow. Um, okay, so that's the video. Um, yeah, message me if you need anything. Um, comment, like, share, be in touch. I'm wishing you um, all the most positive things. Okay. Bye.